What's up, guys? This is Other Battles, Other Things. I'm still salty. I'm Jesse Kapowski. I'm with Paul Ropadope Ashman. Let's find a... <laughs> I don't... <laughs> All right, so let's start with some generic commentary about the deck that I play, and that you can chime in. So Dueling and Strict um, is a mess, mostly. Right. So when you first asked me about your deck, one of the thoughts I wanted to say was, "Boy, I would. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I have the big uh, onions big enough to to run such a brew." Uh, that was like my first. Thought. Yeah, it's like, so. Was, my first thought was like, that. "I wouldn't touch that stuff with a ten foot pole. It, it's just it's not my kind of." And the the reason is is because the duels themselves are not actually that good of battle actions, right? Like, the way of the dragon is a bow of effect sometimes two force all the time but it's conditioned on winning the duel so you would have to assume you win the duel at which point they'll get minus two force and maybe bow well like i, I can just play strength and subtlety you know like so that's an that's an issue with the duels themselves right yeah. like come on at times a really powerful duel but then you got to go to the next thing and it's like we don't even have to Stuff like Ijitsu do Dojo, where it's like this is a duel that just it's like weakness exposed is okay, but it's kind of low focus, and you're a deck that assumes a certain defensive posture because you're going second, and you're spider. So there's a real interesting amalgamation of cards, and then there's the first stuff, which isn't bad, but takes a little bit of setup to get to work and isn't all really that good. So I, I felt you were sort of jamming to two two straps strategies that have to really sort of work themselves into a proper mix to be good. And I don't know if I would ever have the the interest or the the cojones to play an A plus B plus C sort of deck, even though I'm going to have to do one soon here because I made a commitment to the spider boards. Well, so I'll start by saying the fear stuff felt pretty solid. That, you know, there's like some guys with printed fours and like there's the one guy that can make an unstoppable four if you win a duel. Um, like, for your four, once you give them a weapon, like, you give them another item that makes a fear three or four, and then, like, then you're making, like, a fear seven. That's not, that's not nothing. That ain't nothing. So, those, right. that feels okay. One and, of the thoughts we talked about in our, TN, in the New Order review, too, is that, like, excuse me, uh, is that a fear a fear three and a fear four, like those cards will get you somewhere. They will do something. They might not do something that's like really powerful, but they're doing something. And you know, sometimes in strict in these battles, like just doing something is, is all you need. For sure. And so the fear stuff and the fear stuff didn't take a lot of setup to work. Like you're playing Tested Blade. Tested Blade's a great card. Like I'm happy to play Tested Blade anyway. You're playing Okura's release. Like, I got a printed free three on my box. Okura's released as always. It's just Sarushi Tech at absolute worst. So that stuff yep. felt really good. And the way that Okura's released interacts with Oniyara is pretty legitimate, too. You can blow up units that way. Um, that all felt pretty good. The problem was with the marginal duels that I was using to fill out the deck. So, like, specifically Way of the Dragon and Startling Lessons. So, like, at the end of the game, my hand was come one, two startling lessons, and, I don't know, some other terrible dud card. And, like, the whole time I was thinking, like, I could just play the the six good duels and then some high focus value good battle actions instead of playing all this other junk. Or just some high focus value attachments. Like, I could, where's a... Uh, Where's a bow of ritual blessings when you need one? Kind of, kind of thought process going through my head. Anyway, so let's try to find something interesting here. That that was sort of like the, the opening commentary. Um, you want to chime in here, Paul? Was there like, oh, okay, here this first bed attack. So, Paul made a first attack. I, so, I didn't have a board presence. Yeah, yet, so the not first much couple to say of there. turns. Is the weird jockeying, the first couple of turns was this weird jockeying of position where, like, my goal didn't develop exactly how I wanted it. You had a ton of gold on it. I was worried that the game was going to go long and you were just going to sort of overpower me. That we'd sort of trade back and forth and you were sort of 
residual province advantage or virtual province advantage from your stronghold to just overtake me. So I sort of had this slow, awkward, blunted start where, like, there was a couple of turns where I wasn't really maximizing my goal, and I wasn't maximizing my sort of action efficiency. I, you know, grabbed the favor and sat on this kind of stuff. Uh, but where the game really sort of swung open had to have been this first attack, right? That we sort of botched and muddled our way through because we're both playing cards that neither of us have really ever played or used before. Well, I felt so I think we got to so start. The first thing about this, this was a chump attack on my end. Uh, I didn't have the force bonus to get over. Which, if I had taken the time and thought about the entirety of the card pool, I would have immediately figured that out, right? Like, what series of cards is he going to have? There's like a... He could plan departure himself and give himself plus two full force and then back to the front or something. There's a very small number of interactions. The one that I thought about was Army Like a Tide. Like, that was the four focus value card that I thought he could play that's like plus one force. Take it. Yeah. Um, what I thought, though, was is that if he did defend, I could win the battle, which I actually stand by that analysis based on the Fate Hands, except uh, he had the Redirecting Rage. So right. with, uh, um, with the Courage Without Question to cancel his Force Reduction so that I'm a 6 Force unit with 4 Chi, uh, so he goes, like, do anything. I go Fear 8, kill his guy. He goes, do anything. I go Startling Lesson to get plus to minus 3 Force him, and then I think I can win there. Right, and there was a really interesting thought process. I sort of, I didn't really think it all the way through, but like when I went with the, like we did the engages, and and you negated it, and then I was like, well, what's my first action? And then I went like pass, and like that's a really stupid idea. I don't know what, I don't know what possessed me to like go into like a passing mode. I was, th I can tell you what it was. It's like, well, I'll wait for him to like, combine his fear to bow my big unit, and then, like, he'll have to play a fake card maybe to do that, but he wouldn't have had to play a fake card because the combined fear effects were right there in the board. So there's a there's a logic to passing to, like, try to get him to play a fake card and maybe bow my guy before he redirecting it, before I play my redirecting it. But in actuality, he, he wasn't committed to playing any fake cards. He had just bow your guy straight up there. So, I mean, I, I knew I was going to have to play the redirecting age, once I was unable to get him with wrath because he didn't get it the so the the there's no actual like it's not a question mark it's not like a fifty fifty or I, it was just me not taking the time to properly do just the basic math of it uh, which makes me feel really stupid that I missed it but you know so all this happened looking back though this was a miserably bad attack for the simple reason that if I had done this exact sequence of events on the defense that I would have just blown him out completely. That, like, this yep. this turn... So if I hadn't made this... So this was a really greedy, aggressive attack where I was thinking, like, okay, I've got this pretty solid hand. Um, I can swing in. I can answer anything that he throws at me. And I can kill his guys. And then, like, I'll be doing great. The problem is, is that... The other thought I had was that off of the startling lesson, I could maybe dig for a, uh, for a sudden movement to get the force to take the province to. Um, there is uh, there is a little bit of debate there because I would have been nine force, not eight on my turn, right? Because I had two Earthborns, I would have been able to use both. So, like, I don't know if you could easily combine to get to a nine force fear. Yeah, but fair enough. But then I, I can still go fear I, your other unit on my, as my first. Right, I do agree that, like, without, like, the attack of, I'm going to throw myself out there and see what happens that's a pretty dangerous game to play uh and it obviously didn't it, it, the same way that my just i have more force i'll pass and see what happens was a stupid play your i'll attack and see what happens probably isn't a very sort of intelligent decision and like the thought like I, there was there was a thought process it wasn't just me throwing my thing out there and it was that i'm a conqueror my my like my battle action position is pretty solid the number of cards that could just totally get me were really small. The problem was is that the only card that exists uh, is in the monk battle action pool. So I should have been thinking about redirecting rage specifically. But that's the thing yeah. about five R. One of the things it's tough about this game is that you've got to think about cards from card pools you never necessarily play yourself. 
So it's like all monks. Right. <laughs> Crud, what are all those cards I never actually looked at in my packs? Which is why we're such strong advocates for play different factions, play different deck archetypes, so that you start to get a sense of, like, what are they doing, what are they capable of. Absolutely. All right, so this is all the tap backs. Okay, so then... There was a couple of defenses you made then after that where I kept making them one at a time jokes and you never played the card. Uh, do you want to talk about any of those? Anything that sort of like the curse? So you got your curse released Bojo off anyway, right? Oni Yara with a core release dual yeah, sort so of the smoke, problem was, smoke me. I mean, the problem that just happened was that at this point it was like. The deck, like, I, I kept killing a guy. It's like, you attack, like, I was kill, I was on a steady diet of kill one guy per turn, and, like, it just wasn't good mm -hmm. enough because you were outproducing me for the entire game. Uh, you, were, you were outforcing me, out battle actioning me, and outproducing me all while making jokes about how you were not winning the game. Um, pretty, pretty, I don't know what you're talking about. That, that is not, and you and I remember the game very differently. This. Like, these defenses weren't going badly for me. Like, Oniara defense, duel your guy and kill him. Like, I don't know what's better than that in the strict card pool. It's just that you followed up with one of your ten uh, Wrath of Asana woes, kill your guy, straighten, pump up, take the province anyway. Um, and then it doesn't look so hot. How about a little respect for the Earthborn Temples, man? How about, you know, it's almost like... We decided two for two holdings with abilities that don't bow themselves are better than holdings that bow themselves. You know, I have video evidence of you saying that Earthborn Temple is unplayable. Of both of us saying Earthborn Temple is not good enough. I don't think that's what I said, but I'm going to check the video. Check the tape. To the tape, Batman. The tape. Uh, I will say that, like, Tetsuo Sensei was, like, a big kick. So that was, like, I just threw him in last minute thing. Like, oh, you know, there's, there's little to no cost to playing this guy. Let's throw him in there. Like, yeah, there was a cost. There's a little bit of a cost. And actually, I think this game, the complexion of this game is significantly different if I hadn't, if I wasn't playing him. And then this game is just sort of over. And you can see this is the last battle. My hand is like double Startling Lessons, come one at a time. Come one at a time, very good card. Startling Lessons, not. And All right, I can even see your hand. And see that That's you like the last uh, minus three, four, top. and you get forced if you're a duelist or something. Yep. I don't know. I think I like Startling Lessons as a card. I not like over the moon about it but four four swing or three four swing it's like okay but it's another one of those cards that at its best it's a four four swing yeah. uh why is it better than strength and subtlety again like do i want my strength and subtlety to be conditioned on winning a duel i mean i guess i do i guess so uh do you have and any final sort of thoughts uh, I really think these dragon decks, these sort of dragon monk Shugenja amalgamation kind of decks, I don't think I, my build is correct. I think it's missing something. It's a little light on gas. I think it's got a couple of potholes, but uh, it's got a pretty good mixture of, like, these are good attachments, these are good battle actions, these are some good sort of limited open phase stuff. I think this is going to be not the best deck, but a very... A very solid option of a deck to play uh, for the you know for the current arc, for the current portion of strict right now obviously twenty festivals is going to shake up a lot uh, but I, I'm really very happy with this deck right now I, I can already think of a few you know, quibble adjustments and I'm, honestly the Earthborn Temples man I, I almost kind of want to start the Ring of Earth and try not to depend on the Ring of Earth as much as I do but it's hard to get there also I did get multiple long term fruition. So I got to start with Void and Water as well as Air. That's all really good stuff. So, I mean, I had a really good fake side draw there. Well, I mean, the deck's built to produce those sorts of things. So, uh, you know, the, your yeah. deck was looking really good. I think that there's something here in the Spider deck. I don't think it's like a straight write-off. Uh, I think the Tetsuo sensei has got to go, and I think you switch to, like, cards like Strength and Salty over cards like Way of the Dragon. Pair back on the duels. Like, have them in still, certainly, to turn on some of your little effects like the one or two cards in the deck that key off of duels uh, but otherwise just run some high focus value attachments and uh some good high focus actions. value cards that have a little bit, bit more just playability to them absolutely yeah and then you ride your like oniara printed duel and like uh come one at a time what do you think of making fire swords with like kensei like that seems like it could be a really good interaction uh i put the deck together but then i got really depressed 
Uh, the fire sword thing is cool. Okay. It's just a little slow. I don't know. Right. Like it, it, it still needs a little bit of fate side help. What I really wanted in my head was like, you got this guy. He just gives you infinite fire swords, and it's the best thing ever, forever. Uh, but L five R games aren't it. that long. Uh, I think we, it's it's easy to forget because the the actual the te- the time length of the game is still 45, 50, 60 minutes, but it's only five turns. So if you buy them on your three, you yeah, I mean the five swords. It's not the a point where the games the point where the games turn is pretty like there's. There's early game development, and then there's like a critical turn or two where the game swings, and then there's a sort of cleanup phase, right? There's sort of a build-up, climax, denouement that happens to L5R, because you're telling a story with every game you play. That's what we do here in L5R land. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that uh, the important turns maybe aren't that impacted by a guy making lots of weapons. Yeah, he's the kind of card that in your head, it seems really awesome. And he's a good guy. Like, just buy him, pay three, get a sword, because you can do it on your turn and end theirs, right? Um, yep. He's excellent. It's just that Kensei, if you have three Kensei in play, you want six weapons, and he's not going to get you there. So you got to figure out yeah. some other way to get to six. So you're still playing a bunch of weapons. And, like, the weapons is just, like, outside of Tested Blade, like, the number two stuff, is it's, it gets pretty, pretty low pretty fast. What do you think of, so, like... Stockpile weapon, you think, is an out? Stockpile weapon is great, yeah. Uh, it's no enslaved gin, okay. but I really like stockpile weapon. But you weapon. were happy with it. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. force. It's If you're in the, if you're in the market for force, that's, he's your man. So uh, I think this well, is I, I would oh. tweak it. I, uh, you know, the gold's really good. The personalities are okay. Spider-Man. Maybe is they'll it? do something this year. Maybe next year. Is that like the Detroit Spider- Lions? Or Spider-Man. Or Spider-Man will do whatever a spider can. Okay, guys. All right. Be good, everybody. Like us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Leave a comment. Peace Don't out. Don't be salty. Don't be salty. I'm salty. I'm, I'm salty enough for everybody today.